Hi, I was recently tagged by Hilary at the Burrow. Her channel is linked below. Thanks, Hilary, to do the three for three tag. If you don't know what this is about, we're being asked to pick three notes that we really love, although who has just three, and then talk about three fragrances that showcase those notes. So 12 fragrances in total. If you want to find out what my 12 picks were, then stick around. The first note that I am going to talk about is not actually a note. I'm already cheating. <laughs> it's actually an accord and it's amber. Um, I have lots of amber fragrances and I seem to really gravitate towards them. And I had to put myself on a ban from buying any more amber fragrances a few months ago because I realized I just didn't need any more amber fragrances. I'm also going to cheat a little bit more. There's three with an honorable mention and I haven't decided which one's gonna be the honorable mention yet because I feel like they should all be in there. But I'll see how I go. The first one I wanna talk about is an oldie but a goodie and I don't think it's going to need too much introduction and that is Coco Chanel by Chanel. This one is just a beautiful refined classy amber that's not too heavy um, although it can be quite piercing it does project as well quite well um, it's very recognizable and I always feel really put together and dressed up with this or with any Chanel fragrance really this is my go-to work fragrance when I really just want to be in work mode and on point. And sometimes I have been known to put it on at home on a weekend or something when I'm working at home because I just wanna get into work mode and I really feel that this one helps me to do that. The next one is also very well known and it is Grand Soir by Mason Francis Kirkjean. I adore this fragrance. And interestingly, it's often compared to uh, Absolu Pour Le Soir, which is also by Mason Francis Kirkjean. I feel, I have smelled that one too, and I love them both actually, but I feel like this is the tuxedo version and the Absolu Pour Le Soir is kind of like the boudoir version. <laughs> so depending on what kind of vibe you're trying to go for, um, otherwise, they're, I guess they are quite similar or they, um, they have similarities. But this one, again, just a really classy. It smells a bit more masculine in the opening, but it does dry down to a beautiful, uh, sweet amber, and, um, not, but not too sweet. My battery just died. Where was I? Uh, Grand Soir. Beautiful amber, kind of almost masculine in the opening, but really rich and um, again, very refined, not too fluffy smelling, I don't think. I adore this and every, I don't get complimented on fragrances very often because I guess where I live or the circles I circulate in, don't I, people don't tend to comment on perfumes or fragrances, but I have had some people comment on this one. So it is, um, it is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance and it's popular for a reason. Oh, which one's going to be number three? I'm going to go with something a little bit different for number three. When I first chose Amber as my first note that I wanted to talk about, originally it was going to be tobacco, in fact, uh, because these two fragrances are Amber tobacco fragrances. Both of those sort of notes and accords are very, very prominent and noticeable but I, can't, I just can't split them up. So these are a joint three, okay? I'm, I'm not sticking to the 12, I'm sorry. I think it was Rose and Jones who started this tag, so I'm really sorry, Rose. Number three is Salus, or Tobacco Amber by the house Salus. And this is a Middle Eastern brand. I bought this bottle from, um, I'm gonna call him a friend because I have interacted with him a lot. He has a store that uh, sells samples and decants. Um, but he's trying to, I guess, get out of that now and uh, he's trying to sell off some of his bottles and this was one of them that was available and I didn't know what it was like so I got him to send me a sample of it first 
um, and I absolutely fell in love with it. So what does it smell like? It smells a lot more like tobacco than amber, actually, which is why I found it so hard because I really wanted to include this one, but it, I, I don't know if I would classify it as predominantly amber, although it obviously is because it's, it, it's more ambery in the dry down, I think. But the opening is just tobacco and it's that really fresh. So I'm not a smoker and I've never been a smoker and I really hate the smell of cigarettes. But the smell of the tobacco, especially for people who roll their own cigarettes, the smell of the tobacco when they open a new pouch of tobacco, I just really like the smell of the tobacco. Um, and that's kind of what it smells like. But I don't feel like I'm going around smelling like cigarettes. It's just a really prominent tobacco note. And that's, I guess, the closest description I can find. It's kind of a grassy tobacco. And, um, and then it has the beautiful amber in the dry down. It's not super sweet, this one, which I really like. And, and neither is um, Grand Soir either. But although Grand Soir does get quite sweet in the dry down. But this one is absolutely stunning. And I, I'm so glad that I bought it because I don't think I would ever be able to find this uh, in Australia otherwise because he, this, this person goes to Dubai on a regular basis and usually comes back with a whole heap of stuff. So, And the last one, which everyone knows I love anyway, but um, am, ombre, I was going to say tobacco amber, ombre tobacco by Daniel Hosier from Spain. This one uh, also has a beautiful tobacco note in it, but it also has a lot of cinnamon as well. So I just find it's a little bit, it's, it's a lot more cinnamony than say the Salas one. The Salas one for me is really just tobacco and amber with not too much vanilla in the amber accord. Whereas this one's a bit sweeter. It's got the cinnamon in there. It, um, I wouldn't say, it, I don't know if, it, if I would call it a gourmand. I don't think it goes into baked good, goods territory, but um, it is a very, very stunning, stunning fragrance. And I just, I absolutely adore this. In fact, I've just been trying some others from the house as well, and they're all pretty good. So stay tuned to see if there's more bottles being added to the collection sometime soon. So yeah, that was um, the first note, Tobacco Amber. <laughs> Or let's just go with amber because they all did have an amber accord in there. Number two, next cab off the rank is sandalwood. First bottle is Samsara by Guerlain and I have the red bottle here. And if you want to know what spicy sandalwood smells like, this would be the go-to one, I think. This is, uh, this just smells regal to me. I feel like royalty when I'm wearing this. I feel like this is something that Maybe not a modern day royal, but possibly a, an Egyptian royal or something. Maybe not Egyptian, but some kind of exotic royal, maybe Moroccan would wear. It's just absolutely stunning. And, um, and I also really love the bottle too. So that helps. Next one is Santal Majuscule by Sergitan. This one is really interesting. Right, so I bought this bottle last year, I think. And I bought it in the warmer months and I started wearing it straight away. It's actually quite a heavy fragrance in the opening and the opening, from the opening, you wouldn't necessarily pick sandalwood, but sandalwood is a prominent note in this, but it really only becomes really prominent in the, the mid to the, to the latter stages of the dry down. In the opening, there's this bitter cocoa note in it, and it's really weird because in the winter, in the cooler weather, the cocoa note really is quite, um, it stays around for a bit longer, and it's really comforting. There's a really comforting aspect to it, and um, the sandalwood then provides this sort of creamy base, which is just really, really, really stunning. Um, yeah, I, but in the warmer months, that cocoa note in the opening can be a little bit bitey. It can sort of make you go, oh, but then it dries down and you, 
very quickly and as your body warms it up it the sandalwood comes through and it, it just it is a really beautiful sandalwood to wear in the summer and I just would never have thought this was a I would wear this in the summer I didn't think you know when I first tried it I guess I didn't think it was going to be a, a warmer month kind of fragrance but it performs differently in the warm weather so if you've got it and you only wear it in the cooler months definitely recommend just trying it when the when it starts to warm up because it does to me at least smell different in the warmer months compared to the cooler months and then the last one is a uh, white sandalwood by goldfield and banks i just love these bottles they're so big <laughs> but i don't buy big bottles very much anymore because i'm just not going to get through them so i wherever possible i try to buy the smallest amount i can usually 10 mil or 30 mil um, but standard the standard sort of bottle size tends to be 50 um, but this one you yeah if you want a full bottle you can only get 100 mil i think they're changing that format though i think they are bringing out different size bottles maybe this year don't quote me on that but maybe go check out the website um, this is um, a lighter sandalwood lighter in that it's not certainly not as spicy and heavily blended as these ones but it is just absolutely stunning i find that it's really good um, for the warmer months and it's not sweet so it really is uh, predominantly sandalwood and i just absolutely adore it it's fantastic we are at number three and it's very interesting that this note should appear in a video by me because it's only a recent development that I have learned to appreciate this note. And I already have three fragrances I've discovered that I could talk about with uh, this as a predominant note. Uh, the note is, sorry, I haven't taken these out of the box yet. Give me a second. The first note, sorry, the note is rose and the first fragrance I want to talk about is Illy Saab Essence Number no. 1. So I only have a little mini of this right now. I had two of these but I took one on holiday and wore most of it. I still have some left in the little 5ml decant atomizer that I have. Um, this is really hard to find now. It's been discontinued, I think. It was really hard for me to find it, even to find this. Um, so this is a really kind of jammy rose. I just, I guess that's the only way I can really describe it. Hang on, let me just have a smell. Um, it's quite strong, although I find, but it's not cloying. So you definitely notice that you're wearing it, um, but it's not really cloying or anything like some roses can be. And um, I want to say it's almost translucent, but it's not watery. It's not like a Flora Botanica kind of rose or something like that. So it is really beautiful. It is jammy, so it is quite sweet. And in fact, this morning I wanted to compare this one, which is the number two fragrance in this list for rose, is um, Stella. Uh, I think it's just called Stella. It is just called Stella. Um, and this is a... A really beautiful rose fragrance too and I just kind of wanted to compare them because I mean I think this is a new formulation this is a new bottle but anyway they're very very different I don't find this to be as sweet this is kind of um, the rose in this is um, quite crisp and this is more jammy and sweet so it's more sort of cozy kind of rose fragrance and I'd be more inclined to wear this in winter time and or at night time whereas this I think I would be more inclined to wear it in the warmer weather, which is why I'm probably going to be wearing it in the next few weeks because it's getting, it's still quite warm here. So this is sort of like a cool crisp rose. And in fact, this rose is very similar to the rose in the next one, um, which is a very different price point, I might add, but still beautiful. <laughs> and that is Gris Dior by Christian Dior. Oh gosh, you can't even read that. Totally overexposed. Sorry. There we go. I keep forgetting that I'm showing you these bottles and I, I feel like I'm just waving them around. So it'll be interesting when I go to edit this video um, as to what it's going to look like. But this is uh, 
Um, this is a really elegant fragrance and uh, it smells really expensive because it is really expensive. And I really do love it. I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't love it. The reason I kind of liked it, I think, was because it is that kind of cool rose and it's sort of crisp and a little, a little bit more translucent than this one. Sorry, this one, almost watery, but um, it has really, it also lasts really well on me. So uh, I feel really, again, it's kind of like a cocoa thing. I feel really put together and elegant and, but maybe it's not, it's not a, you know, kill it at work kind of fragrance. This is a, I'm going out for lunch on a Sunday afternoon you know, with my girlfriends and we're having, go, we're going to a swanky restaurant and having some champagne or something. That's kind of what this fragrance is for me. That's the kind of vibe I get from it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my almost 12. I mean, I, it's, it's over 12 because I had the honorable mention in the first, first category, but I am going to cheat again because I have to say that, um, this last note, I'm adding a fourth category and this, the reason I'm doing this is because originally this was going to be my note number three, but then I realized I didn't actually have three fragrances that showcased this note. I only have two. This is an extracurricular category. I'm just going above and beyond. You can imagine what my essays were like at, at, at school. Anyway, um, they're two fragrances that showcase the same note, but in very different ways. The first one, is actually a Serge Luton's fragrance. I'm gonna put it right up here so that you can see it. Uh, it is Five O'Clock Eau Gingembre. Oh, sorry, the note is ginger, okay? Um, Five O'Clock Eau Gingembre. This is a really spicy ginger. So ginger itself is quite spicy and it's got a lot of heat in it. Uh, and for those of you who don't know about ginger, ginger also helps to settle your stomach. And I find that if I wear fragrances that have ginger in them, it can also, if I'm, if it's a really hot day or I'm just not feeling great, I find that wearing these does, either one of these does kind of help make me feel better. You know, sometimes when you're feeling sick or you're not, you're not quite right and you don't want to wear a fragrance because you feel like that's going to make you feel even more sick or that you might not be able to handle it. Well, these are my go-to fragrances when I feel like that. So five o'clock Eau Gingembre. Jambray, this is really spicy. So as I said, ginger itself is spicy, but it has other spices in there. I think it's got ginger, uh, ginger, um, cinnamon, and um, maybe a bit of cardamom in there. But five o'clock Eau Gingembre, Jambray, beautiful, beautiful ginger fragrance. Uh, but because it's so spicy, it really goes well in winter time. So that's my winter time ginger fragrance. The next one, number two, is Eau de Sisley number three. Can I just get it to focus? Yeah, no, he wants to focus on my face. There you go. Um, I used to have a massive 100 ml bottle of this and went through it really, really quickly. And then I bought a 50 ml bottle of it and went through it really quickly. This is a really light ginger and um, it's sort of more herbal, it's got a more herbal feel to it than, than the five o'clock Eau Gingembre, Jambray, which is a really spicy feel. This is more herbal. So it's kind of more green, um, which I guess the color sort of denotes that as well. This is absolutely stunning. My only problem with it is that it doesn't last very long. It is just so beautiful and I just adore it. So um, if you're looking, for, and it's perfect for summer because it's got that green herbal feel to it as well, but I really, really love it. So I put those two in because again, originally ginger was going to be one of my three notes that I was going to talk about. But when, it, when I went through my entire collection, they were the only two that showcased ginger. I had other fragrances that had ginger in them, but you'd really have to look for the ginger. So that is my three for three tag. I hope you enjoyed my selection and I did do more than 12 fragrances and I think this is going to be another very long video so I apologize. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful week and I look forward to chatting to you in the comments. All right, thanks, bye.